Hello my friends, welcome back for some more Oxygen Not Included. This is going to be a tutorial that um, I have not done for a little while, and I'm not really sure why because it's actually one of my more interesting uh, topics, I think. And this one's going to be all about germs, all about sickness, and a little bit about medicine. Um, and let me kind of uh, walk you guys through some of the uh, comments that I'll get on a lot of other videos, which is for a good reason. Um, but there's a lot of caveats to this. Um, I'll constantly get people on my videos watching either walkthrough videos or something like that that will look at this and be like, why do you not have a wash basin? Why are you not using sinks? Why are you not letting dupes uh, wash their hands? They're just going to get food poisoning. They're going to get it all over themselves. They're going to get it all over your base. Uh, the, the truth to this is many, many things, many reasons why. Um, the first of which is germs are just not that big of a deal. And I'll, I will sh kind of show my rationale through the rest of this video about that. I'm just going to put up all of the things that I find to be a much bigger deal, especially earlier in the game than germs are. And these are all things that I'd be focusing my attention on. The second reason I don't do this a lot of the time is because uh, a lot of my videos are meant for newer players. And I think one of the biggest challenges of this game as a newer player is there's so many things going on. And if I can advise a newer player just to ignore a certain system just to help them play a little bit better, I'm going to do that. Um, so that's another big reason. But uh, TLDR, like the big TLDR to this video, if you don't watch any further than this, I'm just going to say germs are not that bad. And this is going to sound really funny if there's a certain portion of my audience, which there definitely is, that are players that have returned after not playing for a little while. Coming back and seeing someone say something like that would be ridiculous because the germ system has undergone a lot of change over time. So this is kind of the PSA for the video. Um, PSA is that germs have changed a ton over time. There is no guarantee they are going to stay this way. So there's a decent chance that sometime during this DLC they're going to change it again and have some new mechanics around disease and sickness and germs and all that stuff. Um, so I'm going to walk you guys through a whole bunch of different aspects of germs and sickness and stuff like that in these next few parts of the video. They're going to cover as much as I can possibly explain about germs and all that stuff. We're going to be very thorough, and I'm going to try to fully justify as to why using wash basins is not a big deal. However, I'm going to say, as a quick little spoiler alert, placing them is okay. And I would just do something like this, by the way, and disable it. The only reason that I would do that is because you get the latrine bonus. It's a little bit of extra morale, not the biggest of deals, but I mean, you might as well. So... I'm going to talk about all this stuff. We're going to talk about germs top to bottom. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. And we're going to talk initially about what happens if your dupes get sick, um, how germs can be spread and contracted and that kind of stuff. So let's get into it. All right, friends, here we are. This is the germ torture chamber. Um, feel a little bad about doing this, but we need test subjects to understand how germs work. So. What I've got set up here, just so we can learn, is we've got our room that we're intending dupes to have uh, food poisoning. This is going to be interesting, by the way, uh, with regards to the food poisoning in the air. So there are food poisoning germs in the air. The next chamber has slime lung germs in the air. The next chamber has floral scent, along with the dupe that is allergic. So you can see this poor guy has been around for a little while, as I had to kind of dig to find him. And the last one's going to be infected with zombie spores. So I'm just going to go ahead and spawn a bunch of duplicates here. And we're going to get some sick duplicates so we can actually see what the effects are. Uh, it may take a little while, so it's a good thing we're coming up on the end of the cycle because that's part of the mechanics that are interesting to talk about. So let's go ahead and spawn some duplicates. I'll spawn, I don't know, a handful up here just to get an idea of how many of them get sick on average. We'll spawn a bunch of them for slime lung as well. We only need one for... <laughs> this is a great freeze frame, by the way. Uh, I like to freeze these guys so I can have pictures of them for my thumbnails and stuff. So that's a that's a good one. Maybe I'll go back and grab that. Also, we're going to spawn at least a few for zombie spores. Uh, zombie spores, you don't need that much. So the basic idea behind any of these duplicates, and I'm just going to keep this paused for just a second, only because I want to demonstrate some stuff with slime lung. But if you take a look at these duplicates, and if you go to germs... 
this panel will show you two different things. One, it will show you the likelihood of contracting some kind of sickness from being exposed to these type of germs. And the second is what the dupe physically has on them right now in terms of germs. Um, so this is going to be something we're going to be consulting kind of regularly. But I want to get at least one of them exposed of every type so we can see what the side effects are. Uh, just so you understand what the severity is of getting sick. And it's, I realize it's very weird in our current climate with COVID and the pandemic and all that fun stuff that I'm here saying that germs are not that big of a deal. And I, this might explain why a lot of people think they are a big deal in Oxygen Not Included is because it's a good idea to think they're a big deal in real life. But in this game, they just haven't had a nice way of making that system interesting. So they've just been continually nerfed and changed over time to the point that a lot of times they just don't matter. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about this. So what we've got going on, by the way, is we're going to start getting some of these duplicates being exposed to different types of germs. So if you ever have a duplicate that's exposed to something, you can see it here on their main panel. And especially for the airborne ones, you will see this mild exposure. As time goes on, this will continually go up. And you can see the rate of contracting slime lung here actually ramps up to where it fully will be. So if a duplicate is only exposed to a little bit of slime lung, ger slime lung germs and then gets out of there, their chances of getting uh, contracting slime lung is actually super low. Uh, so that's an interesting point that you could definitely see here. It does not work for allergies, by the way. This person that's having an allergic reaction is basically going to always have this allergic reaction as long as they are near any of the uh, flower scent or floral scent germs. And you can see how bad this is. So the downside of alert allergies is they're just going to stop every once in a while and sneeze. Uh, they'll be very stressed out. This is just not pleasant for an allergic dupe at all. The rest of them will not necessarily contract anything until they wake up the next morning. So we're about to come up on nighttime. These guys have been exposed. I believe the zombie spore people have been exposed as well. And they've all been exposed to the maximum level by now, both because of the saturation in the air and how long they've been exposed to it. So we're likely going to get some sick duplicates here in the morning. So this poor guy, I feel so bad for him. At least we know what allergies are for and what they do. Um, my recommendation as far as dealing with this, if you needed to, is just don't get allergic dupes. <laughs> just not worth it. Um, so I would just not recommend having them at all. So Meep, I'm sorry. Well, maybe I'm not sorry, but I'm gonna put you out of your misery. We don't, well, he's like sparkle streaking even though he's having an allergic reaction. He's like happy and sad at the same time. Now I feel a little bit bad about killing him off, but you know what, you just gotta go. All right, hopefully we'll get some sick duplicates here. One thing that is interesting though, and I'm gonna say this with a heavy caveat is that the rates of contraction here, I just don't see those same kinds of numbers show up uh, in the real uh, game. So I've had however many people that were exposed to slime lung, and we have only one person that actually contracted it, uh, even though our chances are 12, so it's, it's pretty accurate. But food poisoning and stuff like that, I just don't see those numbers on a regular basis. I see a lot less than they advertise, which may just be a coincidence or not, but I don't know. So let's find the two sick people. Here's Ellie. She has zombie spores. You can see the downsides of the disease when you hover over it. This is devastating. If you ever have exposure to zombie spores in your colony, your colony might just be dead. It's so bad to the point that trying to recover from it is almost impossible. Uh, to the point that your dupes will start to starve to death, that they're too far away from the food. Uh, they won't get any of your jobs done. You might start having your base overheat because of stuff like that, or... Whole bunch of problems could come up because of something like this, but minus 10 to everything means that they are basically useless. Um, so zombie spores, this again is just like allergies. The best way of dealing with this is just don't get yourself in that situation in the first place. The very end of the video, we'll be talking a lot about zombie spores and how to basically avoid them. Um, so let's not worry too much about that right now because they are pretty rare. Um, if they were more common, this would be terrible. Um, and I can imagine some like mod maps or something like that being kind of a big deal about uh, uh, like adding a lot of zombie spores and having you try to overcome that. Maybe I'll do a run with that someday too, I don't know. But anyway, zombie spores are super scary. All right, slime lung. This is probably the second worst. Um, this is still not terrible. So the worst part about this is that your dupe is much slower. They will cough up, and you just saw there a little bit. Uh, they will cough up, cough up some slime lung germs, but it's really not that much. Uh, you need a fairly hefty dose to expose a duplicate to have them be pretty likely to contracting it. 
Um, and you need to be prolonged exposure as well. So as far as slime lung is concerned, um, this is going to come up very, very occasionally if you follow the stuff that I'm going to be talking about a little bit later in the video. But yeah, this is definitely the second worst. We're going to probably have to wait another day for the rest of these duplicates to contract food poisoning. And you might notice there's a ton of food poisoning germs in the air, but nobody is saying they're exposed right now. And that's because food poisoning can only be contracted, as far as I know, from eating or drinking something that has germs in it. And drinking stuff can be like the, uh, there's a building that you can use for uh, your great halls, which is this water cooler. If you were to fill that up with germy water, they could potentially contract it from that. But most likely, and the biggest thing that I've, a lot of people complain about in a lot of my videos, which again is fine, um, I'm going to explain why I don't do it, but <laughs> is the duplicates will go to this outhouse. They will use the outhouse, which generates a ton of germs, and then they will go eat. Um, none of them have actually used the, uh, the outhouses yet, but when they do, we're going to watch them and we're going to see exactly what happens because they will get germs all over them, they won't clean their hands and they'll go eat, and they will potentially contract food poisoning. There's a lot of other things that are involved with this, by the way. It's not only the outhouses, it's the fact that if you don't super tightly control your germs at various points of the game, food poisoning exposure is always possible. So towards the end, I'm going to be talking a little bit more how to manage that in the long term, because you don't want to just totally ignore it for the rest of the game. I just don't think it's one of the first things that you should worry about. Let's go ahead and super fast forward here so we can get them using the outhouses and watch the germs spawn. Okay, here we go. They're starting to use it right now because I don't think they used it yesterday. So Jean here just got finished. Now if you check the germs on him, he has a lot of germs on there. They will stay on there until you either rub them off on something else or until Jean uh, washes his hands. And yes, I'm just going to interchangeably call him Jean and Jean, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so what will happen is if we follow Jean here, he will eventually get to the point where he needs to eat food. He'll run over there, which, uh, ready, set, go. <laughs> hey, pretty good timing. And what he'll do is he'll pick up some bristle berries and he'll now touch the food that he's about to shove into his mouth. So I love this, this screenshot, by the way. I need to really go back and grab some of these, but he's going to shove all those germs in his mouth, which is really, really bad. And as soon as he's done eating, you're going to see the status on top of him that says exposure to food poisoning. There you go. And chances of contracting is roughly 27%. Um, this is about where I don't see these numbers lining up, but I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong, or maybe I'm doing math wrong, or something like that. But we ideally, with all these dupes, should get somebody that... Did they wake up because someone farted next to them? Is that what happened? Anyway, uh, at least one of them, I hope, will wake up with food poisoning. Um, so once we get that, we'll be able to see what the actual effects of food poisoning are. And this is mostly going to explain why I don't think it's that big of a deal in the early game. And that's because the effects are just not that bad. Um, they used to be much worse. Okay, we definitely got a couple more sick duplicates here. Only one. And I think there's about 10 or more here. 5, 10, there's like 14, I think, in here, if I'm just counting this correctly. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't think I'm counting this correctly. I think it's actually 15. Only one of them got food poisoning, which, again, whatever. Uh, let's take a look at what the actual effects are from the food poisoning. So, Harold, I think, is the one that has it. Nope, I skipped over them. Here we go. So, when they have food poisoning, the only effects here are their stamina is lowered. That's basically a non-issue because that's related to their sleep cycle. Um, if they're getting minus 100 per cycle, that's fine because they sleep for roughly, like, a sixth or whatever of the cycle there is. I should actually count this out. Uh, it looks like this is actually 24 blocks. So they're sleeping three out of those 24 anyway. That should not matter unless they're not getting good sleep. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about that part of it. Bathroom use speed of minus 20%. They're going to be in the bathroom a little bit longer. Okay, not that bad. Time to recover is only two cycles. So, eh, okay, not terrible. Also, their bladder... Plus 200% per cycle means they're going to have to use the bathroom a couple times. This does get progressively worse as the game goes on. Um, but when your base is small, I don't feel like this is a big enough deal to worry too much about it. I'm going to also say that part of the reason that I don't think this is a big enough deal is because the way to purposefully solve every single scenario that would come up with this is so like convoluted or it's very inefficient to the point that it's almost easier just to let them get food poisoning every once in a while. So... 
that's what the effects are of each one. Uh, food poisoning is not really that big of a deal at all. They're just going to use the bathroom more and take a little bit longer. Slime lung, they're going to move slower. They're going to not breathe very well. Like if you have them down in an area with carbon dioxide or something like that, they're not going to be very effective at all. Uh, this is also something you should really not get exposed to too often. Allergies, again, just don't take allergic dupes. Zombie spores, again, just don't get zombie spores in your base. <laughs> we'll talk about good ways to deal with that, though. So that's what I have for actually contracting sickness. We'll maybe keep these guys down here just to do a little bit more science. But for now, we'll just kind of leave them alone. Um, maybe we'll check back on them. I don't know. We might come back and delete all these people anyway, but yeah. All right, let's talk about some other stuff here. Let's talk about the sources in which germs are created. So this, as far as I know, I may be missing one or two, but this, as far as I know, are the only sources of which germs are created. So in here is where any floral scent germs are created. They come from a couple of different plants. Here's the plant that makes zombie spores, the sporkid. Here's an infectious polluted oxygen vent, which puts out polluted oxygen with slime lung germs. This polluted water vent puts out stuff with uh, food poisoning germs, stuff, polluted water and the bathrooms. Uh, also, uh, well, I'll just get to, to that in a sec. Uh, the bathrooms will also create germs once they are used, which will get onto your duplicates. And also slime. Uh, slime naturally spawns with germs. Again, I may be missing something, or there may be something in the DLC, or I'm just forgetting something that actually creates germs, but these are the only sources that I know of. Um, so this is about it. If you're wanting to worry about how to limit your duplicates exposure to germs, they're basically going to revolve around these objects right here. So I wouldn't worry too much about germs coming from anything else. Let's talk a little bit about how germs are transferred, which is going to be one of the biggest reasons why I say that it's not as straightforward as it seems to just put sinks up and then you won't have to worry about food poisoning anymore. It's a lot more complicated than that. So let's just talk about all the different ways that this could potentially be transferred. One of which that it can be transferred is actually when you produce uh, a byproduct of something. So like you you take something that has germs and you turn it into something else. And I realize I'm being kind of vague here, but one of the better examples of this is if you have a bunch of germy water here. You can see there's germy water with slime lung in it, which you can get from uh, purifying your algae, which I wouldn't recommend, by the way. Or sorry, purifying your slime, which I wouldn't worry about, by the way. Um, but if I were to two send this into a machine to make oxygen, it will take a little bit before they start showing up, but you can see them showing up there just a little bit. There are slime lung germs in this, only because I am feeding it germy water. So that is a possibility. This can also happen with slime or polluted dirt gassing off. So this polluted dirt has a whole bunch of food poisoning in it, which you would get whenever you had to empty one of these outhouses, by the way. Uh, that will spawn some polluted dirt. Or if you go dig up some slime, uh, it will have germs in it by by uh, as a byproduct. And if that produces any sort of oxygen, you can see that both of them will eventually gas off. Uh, they just emit polluted oxygen naturally because that's what they do. And the polluted oxygen they put out will have germs in it also. Uh, it's not as obvious with the food poisoning, but the slime will definitely be pretty obvious about it. Also, considering that as far as I know, uh, there is no way to expose your duplicates to food poisoning other than it actually being on the food or the water they consume. It being in the air is not the biggest of deals, but I just, I am personally not comfortable with that being the case. <laughs> Only because I know that there will be a time in which this changes, or at least I'm very skeptical that it will change. But yeah. Another thing is if you ever encounter zombie spores in carbon dioxide, which can happen uh, down in the oil biome sometimes. If you were to grab a slickster, for example, or if there were already one down there, uh, the slicksters basically will suck up carbon dioxide and they will turn that into oil and that oil will have germs in it as well. He may take a little while, so maybe we'll check back on that. Uh, no, here it is. It also may take a little while. Oh, there's none in here. Huh. Maybe I'm wrong about this because I've seen this happen before. So let's check back on him in a little bit and see what's happening. Um, like what I was also talking about with the slime and polluted oxygen. Polluted water will also put it off, so if you uh, have it exposed to air like this and there are germs in there, it will very, very slowly create polluted uh, polluted oxygen. The weird thing that I noticed about this, though, is that if you just let it sit, I did not see it spawning any germs. So there we go. It's polluted, producing polluted oxygen, and I don't see any germs in this, and I did this as an experiment earlier to see if that would actually happen, and I don't see it. But if I were to mop this up, 
Let me uh, turn off my cheats here real fast. There we go. Spawn a duplicate in here and have them mop this up. Uh, where's the mopping jobs? Here we go. What I did notice is that when you mop it up, both the in the rate of uh, turning this into polluted oxygen increases, but then I also noticed that germs started showing up here. So I don't know if it's a matter of how dense the polluted oxygen has to be before germs started showing up, but that was an interesting side effect that I noticed here. But again, another case of turning a material from one thing into another uh, definitely transfers the germs. So I'm just going to destroy Trevaller here so he doesn't have to live in misery. Another thing that I noticed is uh, if you ever have things that are pumping anything with germs in it, the vents themselves will get germs on them. I don't really know what the point of this is. Um, I guess if you were to deconstruct this, there would be germs on it, but this is... eh. It's not very interesting, almost to the point that you could just disable some disinfecting happening here, because otherwise your dupes will run over there every once in a while and disinfect it. Um, I don't really know what to think about that, so I'm just going to kind of ignore that. Uh, but it, it's there, so don't really have anything profound to say about that. Another thing to think about is um, if you were to mix anything together, so like this side has polluted oxygen that has food poisoning germs in it, and this side is just regular oxygen. If I were to mix those two things together, the germs would eventually transfer into the other gas. And same thing with the liquid. This has no germs. This has a lot of germs. Let's mix them together. And you'll see it actually mix the two. The germs will basically like spread out and kind of equalize among the whole thing. Um, so that's another thing that will happen as well. So if you ever have a duplicate like pee in your drinking water or something like that, then you're going to have germs in your drinking water. Uh, I know it's a fair amount of a meme out there, but <laughs> yeah, that can happen. So yeah, watch out for that. Another thing that I noticed, and this is something that I just can't get it to replicate um, in the sandbox. So I don't know why. I know I've seen this before, but if you build a tile right next to something that, like a, a slime block, for example, um, it will, I've seen it cause germs on this other tile before. I, I think that's what it's from, but I just can't get this to happen in sandbox. But I know that that's definitely another way it can transfer. Another way it can transfer, and this is also interesting, is how it can transfer onto your duplicates. So, when your duplicates use the bathroom, they're just going to get more and more germs on them. Uh, looking something like this. So this guy has a lot of germs on him. They're going to die if they're overpopulated, whatever. But that's not the only way that they can get them on them. And this is part of the reason why I say that just putting down a uh, sink or something like that at the edge of your bathroom is going to solve all your problems is not true. So here we have some polluted water. Let's spawn another duplicate here. Let's make sure my stuff is off. Let's have them mop. So they're going to mop this up. And the act of mopping doesn't actually put any germs on them. So that's not the thing that I'm worried about. But eventually I may want to move this somewhere. I may want to dump this into like a, a hole or something like that. So that my uh, water can all collect in some place. Maybe I can refine it at that point. Whatever. Oh, here we go. There's actually germs spawning. Is that from the bottle though? I don't know. But anyway, there's no germs on the duplicate. But if I were to say, hey, duplicate, why don't you carry this polluted water over here for me? Why don't you dump it out so I have a better place to put it? This duplicate will pick up the water as soon as he uh, catches his breath. We'll drop it in there and, uh-oh, now he has germs on him. So there's a lot more places that your duplicates could actually get germs on them other than just the bathrooms. Which is why investing so much in trying to stop it I just don't think is very worthwhile. It's going to be kind of a recurring theme because there's other ways they could get on them too. So if they were to get uh, polluted dirt, for example, from the bathrooms or from water refinement or something like that, um, we'll go ahead and dig this out. I'll spawn a duplicate. I'm going to delete this guy, by the way, so he doesn't have to live in misery. Uh, Lindsay, what are you doing? Are you are you averse to digging? Yes, all right. It's the first time I've spawned a useless dupe, for an example. Wait, did I spawn two in a row? What? This game is trolling me. Joshua? Game, what are you doing? Ah, uh, stop. Okay, finally. Jeez. All right, so we need to dig it out. Obviously, there's no germs on them yet. But if I were to say, oh, I don't want this gassing off right here. I want this to gas off at an area over here where there's more uh, polluted oxygen and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and have it ask for polluted dirt, which is very common. I'm going to have him move it over there. And you know what? Now he has germs on him. And that's pretty bad. And that's pretty bad because this could also happen for anything else that he touches as well. So let's grab some sand. 
In fact, let's grab some regular dirt first. Let's have him just put regular dirt in a chest somewhere. Uh, not really sure why he'd want to do this, but this is just to demonstrate a point. So if you have some dirt, let's say, oh, I want some dirt here. And let's prioritize the dirt being dug out so that we actually have this happen also. Note that the dirt has no germs on it right now. It does not transfer from, like, uh, gas to solid or anything like that. By the way, I'm going to spawn some uh, oxygen here so he doesn't die. Probably a pretty good reason. So there's no germs on the dirt, but there are germs on Bert. That was a totally unintentional rhyme. Still no germs on the dirt, but as soon as Bert goes and picks it up... I, I can't believe this rhymes. What's happening in this game? This is so weird. Alright, so as soon as he picks it up and puts it in there, we'll notice that there are germs now getting on here because there were germs on the dirt that are inside. So the, ger the dirt now has a whole bunch of germs on it as well, meaning that as long as this person touches something that could potentially get germs on them, they'll spread it around to a lot of other stuff. Um, again, saying that you're going to have to super tightly control every point that they could get germs on them if you really want to make sure that food poisoning doesn't happen. Otherwise, what will happen is it'll spread around to so many different places that they're going to be exposing themselves anyway. Uh, but there is there is good solutions about this, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. This can also happen um, if I were to dig out the sand. Let's just stop requesting this, by the way. Uh, let's just disable it. Or let's just put it at 1. Whatever. Stop loading this. I don't care anymore. So if I were to dig out this sand... The same thing can happen to, even if we had clean sand, by the way, which, uh, let's actually, let's redo this real fast. Let's get a duplicate that does not already have germs on them, just to demonstrate this a little bit better. So if we were to get Ada, and Ada were to run sand over here that has no germs on it, by the way. Ada also has no germs because she has not touched anything. Even if she drops it in there, the sand will start to convert the polluted oxygen into regular oxygen, which means that there's now germs on the clay. So if they were to then take the clay and move it somewhere else, the same thing would happen. There would be germs on the clay. And this is a common scenario as well, because you may want to move your clay over somewhere to make ceramic. Point being, there is a million ways that germs can be spread. And unless you are tightly controlling every single scenario, it just is going to happen. Um, let's even demonstrate one more thing down here, which I think I mentioned before. But that is that if you filter uh, water that is uh, germy, it will create germy polluted dirt, which means that there is more than one place that will actually spawn germy polluted dirt other than your outhouses. It's one of these. Uh, so that can happen also, especially if you're wanting to convert that back into regular dirt via composting, like you're just making a big mess out of everything. There's going to be germs everywhere. Um, so my attitude is, at least as far as food poisoning is concerned, is that it's just going to happen. It's going to happen sometimes. There are definitely great ways that you can prevent it later in the game, but it requires kind of a complicated setup. So I'd say until you have a lot of things up, don't worry about it for the time being. Okay, let's talk about a couple of ways that germs can grow and shrink. Um, this is going to be basically why you'd want to do certain things to manage germs. So in each of these areas, I'm going to spawn two different things. I'm going to spawn regular gas here with no germs. Or sorry, I'm going to spawn both of them with germs. Let me get this set up. So this one's going to be regular gas with germs. We're going to spawn polluted gas with no germs. So polluted oxygen. There we go. You might notice that if you go into the germs, there's a bunch of status effects that will tell you how those germs are changing. So on the regular oxygen, you'll notice that it's falling because the gas is uh, causing those things to die. However, if we are in polluted oxygen... It will grow, or at least it should. I don't know why it's not. Maybe I have... Oh, I think it's because it's food poisoning. It needs to be something that actually naturally thrives in. My mistake. Let's change it to slime lung. There we go. So if this were slime lung, uh, the germs here would definitely be growing on the polluted oxygen because this is a place where those germs can fester. So that's a reason why you would want to start using like these deodorizers and a reason why you'd want to start using these water sieves, or water sieves, I guess. I don't know why I mess this up every time. That's because it looks like sieve, but I think it's pronounced sieve, but whatever. Uh, that's why you'd want to use those things, because generally, if you can just purify them into something else, the germs will be maintained. There's a bunch of other strategies you could use for something like this. Like, for example, if you had polluted water, the polluted oxygen is easy. Like, you just set up something like this, 
There's barely any exposure here to worry about. Done. But for polluted water and germy water, you'll generally want to just section this off into two separate places. So that if something has germs, you're going to be using it on specific sources, like sending it into your bathrooms, which don't care about germs, or sending it into plants, which also don't care about germs. You could also kill the germs in, so in a couple of different ways, which we'll talk about here in just a second. But I just wanted to demonstrate those two uh, different things. The other thing to think about is that any germs that are on food, which, uh, show me what's in here, please. Any germs that are on food will very slightly grow over time, uh, unless there is a ton on them. So there's a lot on here, by the way. Normally their growth rate is kind of slow, uh, but food is definitely a place in which germs can, uh, can fester. All right, let's talk about effective ways to kill germs. Uh, let's talk about temperature. So first, first things first, let's spawn some polluted water with some germs in it. We'll spawn it with a lot. I'm going to make one of them at a roughly normal temperature of 80 degrees. This is probably like a little bit of a warm room temperature. Uh, let's also spawn some at a very low temperature, like 16, for example, still with a lot of germs. Let's spawn a lot at a pretty high temperature, maybe like 170. And let's see what happens with these germs. So if you see that the current temperature here has the status effect, it's killing 47% of the germs per cycle. So as long as something is this cold, these germs will eventually die, even, if, even though they're in a place in which they will naturally grow. On the regular one, they're only going to grow. On the hot one, they will also die. So you can see that if you have temperature changes, those are some ways that you can actually control uh, control germ growth, even on something where they will normally fester and thrive. Uh, so this is definitely something to think about as well when you want to think about how to kill different types of germs. Uh, another thing you can do is you can obviously use the sinks and bathrooms, which we talked about earlier, um, a little bit. If a duplicate were to have germs on them, so let's watch the next time that they go and use the outhouses. It's maybe be a little while. We'll check back on that. But basically what's going to happen is they're going to get germs on them. All right, who's starving? Here's another case in which they can like not even get to their food, so they might starve to death because of this. So I'm just going to delete these poor zombie spore people because uh, they, <laughs> they don't deserve to live with something like that. Uh, if they were to use the outhouse, they would generate a bunch of germs. But notice that everybody down in the second chamber pretty much does not have it because I'm making them wash their hands before they actually leave the bathroom area. This is the traditional way to deal with germs. I'm going to say that this works okay. Um, this does not cover you from all the other random places that you could get exposed up here, by the way. So there is a long-term solution, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Um, the point being is that sinks will kill germs. You can also use sanitizing stations, which uh, we'll just demonstrate up here really fast. You can use sanitizing stations. There's a couple of other things you can do that are weird um, that I would not recommend. So let me drop a duplicate in here. Oh, they're just going to fall asleep. Uh, so, getting trolled a little bit more. Oh, we also need to spawn some oxygen in here. Oxygen. There we go. So a couple other things you can do here is you could set up some stations to actually kill germs that would be both on the duplicants and the things they're carrying. Uh, I just don't think this is worthwhile, really. Um, I'm just going to show this really fast. Um, and I, uh, I'm d debating whether I want to hook this up or not all the way. I might as well. Uh, let's just go ahead and do it. So if you put down one of these ore scrubbers, they will need an intake of chlorine. So I need to actually create the, the chlorine here really quick. Fill chlorine gas. Uh, the ore scrubbers are not worth it whatsoever, by the way. They take forever, and they really slow your duplicates down. Um, so you could do that, like if you wanted to take something out of an area and run it into like a place where it gets turned into something else. Uh, like polluted oxygen, that is. I'm like barely being coherent here as I'm trying to do two things at once. But yeah, if you wanted to do something like that where it got mined out, uh, let's start setting up our chlorine, by the way. So if you were to do something like this um, and then have it ask for polluted dirt, what they would do is they would grab the polluted dirt once this thing got filled up enough. They would throw it in there, they would spin it for a little while, it would come back out, and there would be no more germs on the polluted dirt. So when you drop it in there, you've got now... Oh, it actually still does have some germs, so it doesn't even do a whole job. Man, this thing sucks. All right, yeah. 
don't use this. These are bad. Uh, we might as well just also talk about the same thing in this area, too. Another thing that you could do instead of hand washing is you could actually put up uh, a sanitizing station. I'm not a huge fan of these either, uh, only because they take a material that's really annoying to work with. Uh, and I'm getting very sidetracked here. But what you need for this is you need a uh, bleach stone. And this will only kill the germs on the duplicates, by the way. This will not kill the germs. Oh, this is too hard for them. Uh, hmm. All right, fine. Fine, fine. You made me do it. There. So if they were to load this in here, by the way, um, it would only kill the germs on them. It would not kill the germs on other stuff. They'd have to load up to this bleach town and get this creepy tongue licking them on the hand. Ugh. Don't want any of that. So that's not very practical either. But it is a way. Uh, so yeah. I don't know what this was for. <laughs> I think I might have made the same chamber twice, not remembering what it was actually supposed to be for. So let's move on. One other thing that I did talk about a little bit is that if you were to feed germy water to plants like this, the plants don't care. Uh, they're not going to show any germs on them. The food that they produce is not going to have germs. So if you have germs, you can just throw them straight into plants and just get rid of it and call it good. Um, I know there are people that have the good idea of feeding their polluted water that is germy into uh, thimble reeds, I believe is what they're called. I'm so bad with names. Um, I'm... So embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, thimble reeds. You can feed them into these to get reeds if you want to get rid of your excess polluted water. That's also fine, too. Definitely a good way to do it. You can also feed it to, like, pepper plants and stuff like that also. But the idea is that if you were to do this, that would definitely kill it. All right, sorry for the random cut, but I remember what we were actually going to be doing here. And that was going to be showing that uh, germs can be destroyed by cooking food. So we're gonna go ahead and drop a grill here, set up some wiring for it. And then we need a duplicate that actually has germs on them and one that is going to have the cooking skills. Let's drop Ruby in here. Provide some oxygen. Probably should have set this up before, but you know what? Some people have expressed that it's, they like watching me build this stuff out so that they can see what I'm doing. But yeah, all right, Ruby is the person we need to add skills to. Let's put on our handy dandy cheats here so we can give them whatever we want. Ruby is the last one, which makes sense. Make sure we got the right one. Yep, there we go. And then we're gonna put some germs on Ruby. We're gonna spawn some food and then we're gonna have her cook uh, some food to note that the germs on the food that she touches after making them dirty uh, are not transferred to the cooked food. Then after this, we're going to go on to the next section, which is going to be all about practical builds that you can use in your own bases and stuff like that. So Ruby, uh, we want you to take the polluted dirt over to this area. Oh, by the way, this is... Is this germy? Yes. Okay. So Ruby, start taking the germs over there. Let's get a lot of germs on you just to demonstrate the whole point here. Looks like the germs are going up on her quite a bit. All right, that's probably enough. Now that she has germs on, let's go ahead and spawn some food that she can cook. So, bristle berry. Drop some here. And you'll note that when we uh, queue this up, she'll go grab it. Like we talked about a bunch of times before, it should get transferred to the actual material. So we can look inside here and see that there are still some germs on this. But once uh, Ruby is actually ready to start cooking, the finished product that should drop will not have germs on it. And that... Only is if somebody else with germs doesn't touch it. So if this were to drop on the floor and Ruby were to grab it and move it again, it would just get germs right back on it. So definitely something to think about when you're trying to keep things clean. But here you go. Uh, this new food is done. No germs on here. Not the most, like, riveting way to kill germs, but it definitely does happen in case it ever comes up in a playthrough that you're running. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this section. So... Uh, again, that jump cut right there was just to get into this last example before actually sending it over to the next section. So let's just go ahead and send it over to the next section now. All right, friends, we're at the point where I go through my entire line of reasoning as to why I do not believe that food poisoning is a big deal in the early game specifically, and why I will never make one of these buildings that's actually functional. Um, I wanted to kind of show you guys what a typical setup would look like, kind of in the early-ish games. So you might have something like this up, maybe at like cycle 5 or 10 or something like that. Obviously it doesn't include beds or research stations or anything like that, because it's not really a part of this, but... 
Let's talk about uh, what, how I would set things up after given time to really think about uh, all the different things you'd have to do and why I arrived at the conclusion of food poisoning germs are not a big deal in the early game. So let's go ahead and spawn a couple of duplicates here. What's going to happen with this setup, and this is what I would recommend, is they're going to go use the bathroom at some point. They're going to be covered in germs. They're going to run over here and grab food that grows, or they're going to grab it from here since it's already been moved there. And they're going to go in here and they're going to eat it, and they're going to be exposed to food poisoning. Um, let me show you... That I'm not saying that that part is good. I'm saying that that is better than the alternative. The alternative is a lot of babysitting. So let's pretend that we wanted to try to eliminate all exposures to food poisoning while using only this. Um, so the first thing that I would say a lot of people will do is they will uh, enable this, they will deconstruct some stuff, and they'll add as many sinks as they have for outhouses. So they'll do something like this, and uh, they'll be like, okay, cool, I'm dealing with germs. Uh, th there's a lot of problems with this setup, by the way, and let's just go ahead and build a little water pit here so that we can actually get them to uh, bring the stuff that we need for those. Being a little bit messy here, by the way, this is not going to be like the be-all, end-all of how to set something up. And by the way, the reason I would have one in here by default and have it disabled is because you still get the room bonus. So I still have room bonuses for all these things, giving my dupes a lot of morale. But I'm not using these because these are way more trouble than they're worth. Uh, at least in my opinion. So let's go ahead and fill this up. Let's brush in some water. Whoops, not salt water, just regular water. No germs. Okay, cool. So duplicates are going to run down there. They'll fill up these uh, wash basins. And every single time somebody will use the bathroom, they'll wash the germs off. And then they'll go back about their day with no germs on them. This is a very flawed set of logic here. And I'll explain why. And that is because we already know that once you produce anything polluted, whether it's from this outhouse or whether it's from this wash basin, that has germs in it now. So if you drop off the uh, polluted dirt, if you drop off the polluted water and your germs touch it, or your germs touch it, lol. We're going to call these guys germs now because I've said it so many times. Your duplicates touch it. They're going to be covered in germs. Let's say you are like, okay, well, what do I do with this stuff now? Um, I don't want it just sitting out and creating a bunch of germs in the air. Um, for whatever reason, so let's say a lot of people will do something like this where they will go ahead and create an area to actually dump it But once again, the problem here is that they are now exposed They will not wash their hands or at least when they go to touch it again after they're carrying it on their back They will re-expose themselves over here or if we were to have something out here to actually collect the Polluted dirt they would re-expose themselves here as well and once they re-expose themselves, anywhere outside of where your where your uh, wash basins are covering, if they touch anything else, it's also going to transfer the germs, which is something we already know. So you're getting germs on potentially other dirt, you're getting your germs on your food, and once it's out there, it's just going to continually spread. It will grow on your food, which means that you have now sufficiently exposed yourself just as much as if you were to do something like this. So let's work backwards and try to solve this problem. Uh, let's say, okay, we don't want anybody leaving here by because of this water and because of this uh, polluted dirt. So let's put it inside the bathroom now. Let's try something else where maybe we do something like this. We could put this on the other side. We could say, all right, if you're going to empty stuff out, let's do it over here at a place that you have to leave uh, by going through sinks after this. So, all right, sounds pretty solid. Let's do something like this. Let's copy this, drop it in here to say that if you want to have any polluted dirt or any polluted uh, water, you're going to drop it off there because that's where we're going to want to take it. Let's go ahead and drop some deodorizers in here so that we can purify the air and uh, our duplicates can breathe it more comfortably. This is especially a bigger deal in the DLC, by the way, because as far as I understand from the DLC, um, the polluted stuff will actually bother them quite a bit. Like, they will get negative... Uh, status effects from coming in contact with polluted stuff. So let's say we do something like this, so that whenever they empty the, the outhouses or whenever they have to empty the wash basins, they take it over here, they drop it off. All right, cool. So that solves part of the problem. Um, there's always the part of the problem. It's going to sound really funny when I say it, but your duplicates could pee their pants at some point or something else could expose them to germs, or there could be a bunch of other instances in which this does not actually solve every issue. 
And I'm going to stress that once the germs are unleashed out here, if you miss it, it's just going to spread to everything. It's going to get on your food and it's going to take forever to clean up. It's just going to be a big project. Um, but let's talk about some like more practical ways this could be annoying. So if I were to start storing a lot of polluted dirt here, that only solves part of the problem. Because there's some other stuff I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to start adding uh, things to actually purify this water. So we're dumping into a pit here, but that's not necessarily it. Uh, we could generate a lot of polluted water from this, and you may get it from other areas. So, okay, now we need to start uh, refining it here. So let's grab a water sieve. Let's put it like that. And again, if they're going to interact with this, I don't want to have them uh, going all the way down there. Or rather, I don't want to... This is going... I should back up. This is going to generate polluted dirt that has germs in it. So if I'm going to have them going anywhere else, I don't want them actually leaving this area. So I still want them all to be gated by these wash basins. So I'm trying to be as economical as I can, even though I already think this is not worth it. Because this is so much maintenance. In the very early stages of the game, I just don't think that it's worth it. Alright, so we'd have something like this. Alright, cool. Now we have germy water. Well, what are we going to do with that? We can't put it back in here because if they were to touch it after they pumped it back out, now the duplicates have germs on them again and your whole set your whole setup is ruined. So we effectively have a section of water that we can't really do anything with right now until we start growing blossoms or uh, something like that, which, okay, sure, fine. We're also spending power having to deal with this. We're spending a lot of extra setup. We're having to bring a bunch of uh, sand and dirt over here. This also may get filled up at some point, so we may have to add more basins, which also means that if I grab any polluted dirt from anywhere on the map and I want it to be focused in this area, I'm going to have to travel all the way through this whole area and up here in order to drop it off. And again, let's just rephrase what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid polluted, or sorry, polluted. We're trying to avoid food poisoning. And the only thing that we're really going to be getting from food poisoning is they're going to go to the bathroom a little bit more often throughout the day and take a little bit longer to do it. If your base is this small, I just don't feel like this whole setup is all that worth it. Um, the other thing to think about here is that if you have germy clay at this point and you want to start making ceramic before you have everything else set up, which is not super likely, but it is still a possibility, um, you now have to set up your ceramic somewhere in a place that's going to be germ-free also. So you could continue to expand this out, continue to make your base like this if you really wanted to. The other thing that could get really annoying is that as you add more duplicates, you might need more bathrooms than this. You could put them on other shifts and normally deal with that pretty well. But if you have a duplicate over here that's maybe adding more sand or is bringing polluted dirt or is emptying this out, and too many of them cross this point without washing their hands, the floodgates are open once again. You're going to get it on your food. You're going to get it on other things that they touch. You're going to eventually expose yourself and make uh, your food a festering germ area and that's just not good so there's just so many holes with something like this and this is about as good as you could do and like i mentioned before i'm just going to put this up once again it's not that germs are necessarily something you should ignore it's that these systems are way more important to get set up for your efficiency and especially for newer players who need to be focused on things that are very uh important and not be distracted by things that really don't matter that much so that's it. That's pretty much my whole rationale as to why something like this is just not worth it. I, I don't think so. If you want to do it that way, you totally can. There's nothing wrong with it if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. But the thing that you're avoiding is food poisoning. And it's really not that big of a deal. Now, if you want to eventually solve it, which is fine to eventually want to solve it, um, there's better ways than what I've seen around. A lot of times people will make a bathroom with the plumbing and they will just add sinks on the exit and they might do something like this that might be a little bit silly. I'm going to show you a better way to do that in case you're interested. And by the way, something I should mention is that this is not how I typically set up bases and that's because uh, I have not sat and thought about this problem for a really long time. And this is effectively what I have come up with by just sitting there and building over and over and over until I came up with something that I thought was pretty decent. Um, so this is not what it'll look like in like walkthrough runs or older videos or something like that. But this setup, at least how it was before without all this added junk, is probably what I would recommend doing from here on out. I think that's much better than what I was doing in some of my older videos. So yeah, just got to fess up to some mistakes I was making in the past, but definitely got to make it better as time goes on. Another thing that you could be thinking, well, we'll come back to that.
Yeah, we'll come back. Let's take a look at the setup that I'd recommend. It'd be looking something like this. And uh, you may notice that, again, I don't have sinks that are exiting. I only have the sinks for the room bonus on my bathrooms. Instead, I have the sinks for the entrance to the mess hall. And the reason that I would do that is because if you think back to food poisoning, the only way that I've ever seen anybody get exposed to food poisoning is if it was in something that they ate, which makes sense, uh, or drank. So if you are basically controlling the place in which they will enter to start eating and have you have enough sinks there, uh, they will clean their hands. If you keep your food clean, which we'll talk about this here in just a second, the food will be sterilized regardless of what happened to it before, before they get there, at least in like 99% of the cases or more, unless you're being really sloppy about it. Uh, but that also means that you are freely allowing food poisoning to get on other stuff. You're kind of okay with that. As long as you make sure to cut them off before they actually introduce it to themselves uh, and make sure that they clean their hands before uh, they, you know, get exposed. So let's talk, let's uh, go with a setup like this and let's see what actually happens with it. There's a couple of bits of nuance, but I want to let this run for a little bit so we can see what happens. There's a couple of ways this could potentially fall apart. I'm adding way too many duplicates. Oh man, I don't want that many. Uh, let's see how much we go down to. 15. Okay, that's about what I usually go with. So that's what we're going to start with. So uh, we're going to let this run for a little a little while, but you might notice there's a little bit of a weakness to this. And that is that if everybody eats at the same time, you're going to overwhelm your sinks and there's going to be duplicates to get through. You can definitely mitigate this by adding some stuff on the schedule. So if you add more schedules, then that will make it so that you have duplicates eating at different times. And as long as you don't overload one of your schedules, then you shouldn't have any problems with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to split this up a little bit. I'm going to split this into uh, fourths so that there's going to be four different schedules. So we'll do something like this, something like that. Whoops, that's too many. We're going to do something like this next. So downtime begins there and ends here. You could also add more, by the way. You just want to make sure you're not having this big flood of uh, duplicates coming in all at the same time so that you overwhelm your sinks and then just expose them anyway. Let's do this, and then one more for the last block. And then just evenly split these guys up depending on the time of day. Then at that point, we should be good. So let's just do this, two, three, oh, another three because I messed up, four, four, two. All right, we're back to even, two, three, four, uh, this is pretty close. Maybe a couple more. Two, three. All right. So this is pretty close. We have them all split up to be working at different times of the day. And then the last thing we need to do is make sure that we're actually shipping in uh, bleach stone. So the setup here for food is I have the food being harvested somewhere. This could be any type of food. Uh, the common ones are going to be bristle blossoms or meat. Then I'm going to say that you're not allowed to eat anything other than what I'm going to be explicitly shipping here. So let's say we want to cook our food and turn it into something else and then ship it in here. So I'm going to go ahead and say nobody here is allowed to eat the raw version of this, which is bristleberries. So I'm going to deselect that. And then we also need somebody that's going to be able to cook. So let's just actually sign a few of them so that we have cooking around the clock on different schedules. There we go. And then I want to say, cook bristleberries forever because that's what we happen to be growing. Let's spawn some bristleberries. And there. I'm also going to crank up the priority on this, so ideally duplicates won't try to grab uh, food that's done on the ground here. Another thing we need, like I talked about, is uh, bleach stone. So let's go ahead and spawn some of that. Maybe like this. Let's dig it out real quick. And then for these, I'm just going to have it ask for bleach stone that I set to sweep. Uh, the idea behind this is if I set it to always accept that, duplicates will just be running back and forth. This is set up in a very specific way, uh, and I'll talk about this in just a second, but just so that duplicates should still reach it. Um, but it's also in like an airtight container. So we want bleach stone here, consumable ore. Let's go ahead and drop it here. And then for this, I also want to ship bleach stone, but I want to set it to a higher priority. And then I'm going to mark all this stuff for sweep, which I'm having a hard time. There we go. So now the setup that we have is somebody should come over here and start grilling, or at least hopefully they should. I don't know what they're doing. It's probably this guy who's saying hello to everybody. Uh, 
Well, I don't know why someone's not grilling, but it'll eventually happen. Let's just pretend it happened. Because I don't know what my duplicates are doing. Alright, the gristleberries, we will... Oh, it's... are they all on break? Is that what's going on? I don't know what's happening with these guys. They're trolling me pretty hard. We also need to make sure to uh, ship this out. So, once we ship out the gristleberries, uh, they will all eventually wind up here because of the shipping system. It'll head down there, it'll drop it in the corner. Also note that we have bleachstone down here. And this setup is meant to be an airtight setup that only has chlorine in it, and we are continually providing more chlorine by shipping bleach down there. The setup here is meant to have a tile of liquid here. I just use water, uh, which you can set up this set this up in a bunch of different ways. Uh, and then on the other side, I have a door so that if I actually need to move any air out of it, I have a gas pump and a door that will be connected to it. So initially I will use this, or if I ever have any problems with this, I could open the door, everything would drop down, and I could get it back out in case there was some kind of problem. Um, but yeah, so that's a way to eventually make an airtight seal here that your duplicates can still reach. Now they're patterned throughout the day. I don't know why these guys are not cooking. What is happening? What are you guys doing? This isn't asking for it. I don't know what's happening with our grill, uh, but let's just pretend it's happening. I literally don't know what's happening. I'm probably looking really dumb right now because I don't see what the problem is here. I have a bunch of, of duplicates that should be able to cook, unless I started deleting a bunch of them, but I don't know what is happening. A bunch of people should be able to cook. Okay, here we go. It must have just not given them their skills. That was weird. All right, anyway, so the pattern here is that we have somebody cooking, Nobody, or people can touch this as much as they want to, I suppose. But this is not going to be the food that they eat. They're going to go grab the food from here when it's time for them to eat. And if they've used the bathroom, if they've emptied this out, if they've dumped a bunch of other stuff, then uh, they might have germs on them. And that's fine. And I'm okay with them having germs. As long as they wash their hands before they eat, then that'll take care of all the problems of them potentially introducing germs into themselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit here... We are going to run this science project for a little bit longer and uh, I'm going to come back with it after a handful of cycles and we'll see how many duplicates that have been exposed and we'll see somebody in a full cycle of this. So uh, I'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're back and we're at cycle 15 after simulating this for a little while and guess how many duplicates have gotten sick? If you guess zero, then you are correct, meaning that our setup is working as intended. It's going to look a little bit different, by the way. Uh, I need a place to actually collect the carbon dioxide without worrying about it too much, so I guess if we were being less lazy about this, we could just delete it like that. Uh, also added some oxalite just because I don't have any oxygen generation, but whatever. But yeah, the, the setup here is working exactly as is intended. Uh, nobody has gotten exposure to food poisoning in these 15 days, and there are 15 dupes. Uh, so let's follow somebody on a normal schedule, and let's see what they do on a regular basis. So, these duplicates are heading to the bathroom right now. And let's note, Turner is now a filthy boy. He has 4,000 germs on him, but he's gonna go to eat right now. He's gonna stop off at the sink, he's gonna wash his hands, and he's gonna move on and get ready to eat. So, this is the normal routine for everybody on this schedule. These guys will do it, a handful of them at a time. I think there's four of them on this schedule. As soon as they're done, they'll go to sleep. Which I don't have beds, by the way, but yeah. Could definitely add some. So they'll go to sleep. The next shift will come up here in just a moment. As soon as they uh, are done sleeping, they will be ready to eat and do the exact same thing over and over and over. And you can add as many schedules as you really want to just to offset it so that they don't overwhelm these sinks. But this setup is doing exactly what I'd expect it to do. I still get the room bonus. Still don't have any exposure. And I should touch on a couple of other things that you may have questions about as I was uh, kind of watching back that previous segment. And that is that uh, the reason that this matters later in the game is because if you have duplicates that are using the bathroom two to three times a day, it's different if you're in a smaller base and they're only traveling like, you know, this far to do it. I don't consider that to be a big deal. But if you have duplicates that are way out here and they need to go all the way back to use the bathroom multiple times a day, they might as well just not even be working that day because of how much time they're gonna waste traveling. So that's why it's a bigger deal a little bit later. I'm also going to clarify a couple of other things in the sense that this idea of having sinks leading into your mess hall was not my idea. This was the idea of somebody that had commented on a video about germs a long time ago. 
uh, on one of, it must have been one of my very first videos. Uh, this person was talking about different ways that you could mitigate that and eventually said, well, why don't you just put sinks on the way into the mess hall? And my thought with that was still under the old mindset of, well, I'm gonna be controlling it here, I'm gonna have to control it other spots in the map, and I have to control it here, I just don't think that's worthwhile. But ultimately, if this is the only place that they're washing their hands, this is when it starts to work. The other part of this that is essential is that shipping has to be a thing, so that you can drop off all of your food in an airtight place like this. This is both to keep it fresh and also to kill anything that may be on there if you happen to get any germs in here for whatever reason, so it doesn't sit here and fester. Um, you could potentially do this with uh, something else, like a refrigerator if you really wanted to, but this was a build that I saw somebody uh, link a little while ago in one of my comments that was really cool, uh, and I thought it was really cool, so I'm just going to start doing it, and I'm going to recommend that other people do it as well, if you're, if you're able to handle all this nuance, by the way. If not, um, it's still totally fine to use a refrigerator with this type of setup and just ship it there instead. It will use a lot more uh, power, but this is definitely a setup I can see using basically permanently once I have shipping up. So this is a very cool idea, and I'm not going to say that this was my idea in general. This was definitely kind of putting together good ideas from different people and coming up with this. The other thing that I'm going to talk about is you might be thinking about different ways to do it up here. And what if you had these wash basins up here so that the if you had it at the entrance of your mess hall. Problem is you're still running into the same issues of if somebody needs to empty something out, they can't walk around the map and go do something else. So that's a problem. But the other problem is if there's food, or sorry, if there's germs on your food, your duplicates can't clean their food and their hands at the same time unless you use something silly like that thing we saw earlier, which was to clean ore, which I don't even know if that works on food anyway. That thing's so bad, it's like not even worth talking about. But <laughs> if you were to do something like that, that would also not work, meaning that you couldn't just flip the setup here and have it work the exact same way. It would help a little bit, but your germs would still get on the food um, and it will would eventually expose people. And again, your time investment for something like that early in the game is just not worth it as far as I can tell. So this is what I've really come to like, and this is what I would recommend as far as handling germs in the later portions of the game. All right, this video is getting pretty long, but we still have more things to cover, as you might have noticed as I zoomed out. There's still more things we haven't seen yet, and that's because we need to go do some other stuff. So let's move on from all these uh, friends, and let's talk about a different setup. Um, I'll come back and delete these guys later. Let's talk about slime. Um, slime is something that naturally occurs, and if you take a look at these uh, slime pockets, they will spawn with germs uh, automatically. And the concern that a lot of people have is, well, if I have my duplicates get exposed to the slime lung, they could get sick. And slime lung is objectively worse than food poisoning is. So that is, that's not the greatest thing. Uh, but there are ways that you can deal with it and you don't have to be overly careful about it. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, by the way, let me fill this up with oxygen really fast just to make sure that we have a breathable area for our duplicates that we're about to spawn. You can do this in one of two ways. One way that I've always done and haven't had a lot of trouble with is putting up a big row of deodorizers and a big row of storage bins and setting them up something like this and then having these storage bins say, whenever we encounter slime, let's uh, bring it straight here on a pretty high priority. I'll set it as soon as we dig some of it out, by the way. Same thing with this deodorizer. Uh, let's go ahead and just add some airflow tiles. And let's make a whole bunch of them up here just to make sure that this area is nice and clean so that we're not actually letting the slime get everywhere else. And as we know from earlier, if you have germs inside something that's been cleaned, like clean oxygen or regular oxygen, the germs will die pretty fast. Uh, another thing you can do, by the way, is you don't have to necessarily set it up on one central location. You can set it up in an area that's actually at the entrance point of where you're going to start mining slime. So you could do something like this instead where you basically just have it set up to be right next to the point that it's mined so that you have it spend the least amount of time possible out in the open. What I would still recommend either way though, is doing these in shorter bursts. If you're really that worried about it, I'm not super worried about it, but if you are, I would just say do it in shorter bursts because those shorter bursts will give your duplicates enough time to recover and grab all this stuff and move it out of there before you get a big uh, set of them exposed. So what I would typically do, let me turn off my cheats, by the way, so that we can do this kind of for real. Let's spawn a handful of duplicates. Dup. 
we'll drop them out here like so. And then uh, once this hits the ground, let's go ahead and have this thing asking for slime at a pretty high priority. And uh, let's see how fast they clear it out, assuming you have a big squad here. You typically won't have this many, so let me actually delete some just for a little bit more realism. We'll delete a couple of these guys. Let's delete Max and May. All right, I think we have four, so that's, that's pretty reasonable. So what I would typically do is I would typically just block it off into a smaller section like this if I was worried about it. You can go as hand with this as you want to, it just depends on how much you're willing to expose your duplicates. So we're digging all this stuff out, and usually as soon as they find slime, you should have a supplier or somebody like that that's running up here and dropping it off as soon as they can. So they hit the little bits of slime every once in a while, and they will be in these kind of like mixed biomes. And if you do something like this, I just want to run a little bit of a science experiment and see how exposed they got because of all this. This is weird. They're spraying the ladders. Probably just because it was on the duplicates and the duplicates are touching the ladders. So let's see who's been exposed. This person had contact, which is still not enough to actually get them exposed. So contact is different. That means that they've had a little bit of encounter with it, but not enough to uh, actually get them sick. Otto is still standing in the area in which the slime was spawned. and He's fine, still at contact. This person hasn't gotten it at all. This person's only gotten a little bit, so if you wanted to stop there for the day, that's fine. You still made some progress. The ultimate reason that you'd be going in here anyway is to get this gold amalgam and slime, so we still got some, still got a good amount. If you wanted to keep going though, you could keep going. Let's continue to dig some of this out. And let's see how much we'd have to actually go before this starts becoming a bigger problem. Uh, we should also note that the amount of germs that are released from this is not a ton, and you do need a lot of exposure to actually get these uh, duplicates to a point where this will become a problem. So the day's about to end, which means that all this stuff resets. Uh, so we'll get back to this. This is the only person that got anywhere close. Mild exposure, only have a rate of about 3%. I'm not going to say slime lung is trivial, but it's to the point that I don't think you should obsess over how you dig into here. Because most of the time, even without this closer bin, uh, I'll do it with a more central area. And the amount of duplicates that I have sick from slime lung on a constant basis is like zero or one. Um, it's never anything overwhelming to the point that I would say it's a huge problem. Slime lung, you should be kind of, you shouldn't be casual about it though. Don't let it just sit out. Definitely have your duplicates take care of it as soon as they can. Uh, let me spawn some food here for these guys real quick. Bristle berries. My other ones are probably getting hungry too. Let's spawn them for the other ones. Just because we want to see this running. There we go. So yeah, this is this is generally how I'd recommend getting slime out of here. Is just have a couple of duplicates jump in here and mine it. Make sure you have a couple of duplicates ready to carry it back to wherever they need to go. There is a lot of disinfecting happening, which I still don't really see a point to doing. So if it's bothering you that much, you can also disable it. Um, or you can try to just build boxes that are closer. So if I were to come down here, I might want to just start dropping off stuff that's nearby. By the way, let's spawn some sand so we can actually have this being cleaned, which is the whole point. Um, let me spawn some sand here really fast. Brush, sand, yep. Bury our food, because that's just what we do. But yeah, uh, if you're worried about it, you can build this a little bit closer and eventually move it a little bit later if you wanted to. Uh, but this in general is just not really something that I would fear. Um, I've gone pretty crazy about mining into some of this slime sometimes, and if you just accept the risk level, then you're fine. It's not going to end the game. It's not going to damage your colony in any way. It might be a little bit inconvenient, but that's fine. If that's the worst thing that you're encountering, then there's not really that much to, to worry about. All right, let's also talk a little bit about how to handle polluted water that's around the map really quickly, only because we didn't talk about this too much. Um, what I will typically do is I will typically just open up passages like this, and this could be kind of annoying, so you could dig it from underneath if you really wanted to, which is a little bit better way to do it, but depending on what you're trying to do, that might not, not always be an option. And then if you need to empty it out here, and this can also be the, for the case that I talked about earlier, that your duplicates could pee their pants at any time. There's nothing you could do about that. Uh, it's always a possibility, right? Uh, even in real life. But in, in case that happens, I would just expect there to be a big water pit down here. And I would expect this water pit to probably have germs in it, based upon all the stuff you're going to be dumping down there. Because this will effectively just be like a dumping ground for anything that gets opened up like this. You might eventually want to funnel water there on purpose, just because it's an easier way to manage it. But I would treat anything that you have down here as germy. 
And that kind of leads into our next point of how to handle different types of germy water sources. I talked about this a lot in my video about uh, water management. So this is going to be kind of a repeat of that. TLDR, the idea is that if you have a germy pool of water here and a bunch of sources of clean water, I would just do my best to keep them separated into two separate areas because the germy water can be used for certain things and the clean water can be used for a lot of things that don't, that need to not be germy. So this, for example, if I was able to cool it, I could use this to feed to my plants because my plants won't care if this is germy. This clean stuff, though, is going to be important for oxygen. So let's talk about that really fast. Let's go ahead and turn all this system on so that we start purifying all the water that we need. And then I'm going to hook this system up to our water, or sorry, to our oxygen system. It's going to look something like this. And you want to make sure there are no germs in this water uh, pretty cr critically, only because... You could be exposing yourself, especially if you have slime lung germs in there, which, again, is not super common. Uh, I would not recommend actually purifying your slime into algae. I think that's kind of a waste. Um, but it could happen. Uh, there's a couple other ways that it could get introduced, but yeah. What I would also recommend is that if there's any food poisoning germs, which is more likely going to be in here, I don't want to get people into the habit of producing oxygen with... Uh, food poisoning germs in there because that could lead to all kinds of problems later if they decide to change it in the DLC. This is again another comment that was very valuable and something that I've mentioned before. Um, just because something is the way it is right now, that doesn't mean it's not going to change. Uh, so for my oxygen setup, I definitely want to make sure I'm feeding it non-germy water and have something like this. This is a very remedial oxygen setup, by the way. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to set up your oxygen. This is a build I've been messing around with a little bit lately. Mostly because it's something that's very much approachable for newer players and doesn't have a lot of nuance behind it and you still get the benefits that you would get from something that looks a little bit more compact or complicated. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, I may do a video on this a little bit later to talk about a very easy, simple setup for oxygen that uh, is going to perform the way you need it to without all the complication. Alright, let's talk about something that... Uh, I'm sure plenty of people that have seen this before have been extremely scared of, and that's how to deal with zombie spores. Um, like we were talking about before in our exposure chambers, zombie spores, if a lot of your duplicates get this, this is basically game over. There's no way you're going to keep a colony functioning once you have an outbreak of zombie spores. Uh, you're basically dead. And again, like I said earlier, the best policy is just to not get exposed to it. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but that is the best policy. So let's talk about ways to not get exposed to it. I mean, the first thing about it is that the only place you can be exposed to it is somewhere where the spork is growing. So if you're really uh, curious about it, you can go to this germ overlay. You see any of these blue germs, that's what these zombie spores are. That means there's a spork nearby and you should just avoid it at all costs. So if I were to eventually come in here, let me turn my cheating tools back on, by the way. If I were to eventually come in here with uh, duplicates to like get the diamond out of here or to get the oil out of here, one thing you could always do is just leave it alone. Like you could just dig it around it, do something like this. Whoops, don't do that. Uh, let's pretend I didn't mess up right there. <laughs> what you could do is just leave it alone. Like leave it, leave it confined. Oh man. Here I am being like, hey, leave it alone. And I open it up. Leave it confined. Leave it in a place that it's never going to spread because if you just leave it there, it can't hurt you. Uh, just keep it sealed and make sure you keep it sealed. If you don't want to do that or for whatever reason you need to open this up or you need to clear out the whole area for some reason, there are still ways to deal with this. And I would normally have duplicates that are demonstrating this, so just take this with a little bit of a grain of salt in the sense that if you're going to be coming down here, your duplicates need to be in suits anyway. As long as they're in suits, they won't get exposed to this kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely if you're planning on doing that, I'm not going to do that just for the sake of time. But definitely have uh, duplicates that are wearing suits down here. If you needed to actually bust in here, there's a couple of ways you could do this, though. Uh, one way you could do it, and probably the way that I would do it if I had to be in this situation. So I would just do something like this, make a quick water lock, uh, which I'm definitely messing up a little bit. <laughs> uh, a little bit too low. There we go. Make a quick uh, water lock, or I guess more specifically a liquid lock. And you can fill this with whatever type of stuff you want. Since you're near the oil, we might as well use oil. So let's go ahead and just sample this, brush this in, and there we go. Now we have a clear separation between where the zombie spores will be once we start working and where they won't be. So if I had duplicates coming in here, we would eventually mine this out, 
keep this sealed as much as you can. Zombie spores are spreading. I would then come up here and dig out the sporkid seed and make sure there is no chance that this would actually go uh, anywhere else. So I would probably just create a uh, bin here. And I, I call this by a different name every time, but I guess it is a bin. I would set it to accept these seeds, which we don't have right now because there's not a duplicate in the area, but just pretend. I would set this to accept those at a nine priority and just say that if you ever find one of these seeds, go put it in that box immediately. And also try to keep it away from pips the best you possibly can. So if you need to put it inside here or put it somewhere else that nothing can ever reach, you could put it under water to make sure that the pips actually can't get to it. You could do that too. Once you get that done, uh, the next part would be actually venting the stuff that has been infected. So all this carbon dioxide is infected. And if we can just do something like this and blow it straight out into space, not into our oxygen system, that would be bad. And just blow it straight out into space. That will get rid of it, and you probably want to put this in a place that you know your duplicates are not going to interact. So you could have an area that's really far away, you could put it behind some locked doors, and then once you actually vent it out into space, it should dissipate. So I'd probably do, you know, something like this. To make sure that it doesn't spread anywhere else other than where I want it to. So once I have something like that set up, I will just go ahead and vent this out and get rid of it. Another couple of things you could do which are not as economical as this, is you could use the uh, slicksters to suck up the carbon dioxide and then produce oil. If that oil happens to be germy, which we did not see earlier, but it may have been because of a viral, like, or not a viral load, the amount of load or like space there is for the germs to exist could have just not existed in that small amount of uh, oil. Once you get it all mopped up into oil though, you can just flood this with chlorine using one of these bottle emptiers. Uh, for gas, that is, which look like uh, these guys, these canister emptiers. If you have any uh, chlorine that's in canisters, which you can get from these canister fillers, you could empty out the chlorine in here and kill the germs in the both the carbon dioxide or the oil, depending on how you wanted to do it. But those are a couple of other ways you could do it. But this one is one that definitely keeps you the most safe and definitely vents all this bad stuff out. And we're venting it out into space here, by the way, which it should be reaching here in just a second. Uh, apparently not. Apparently we've got a little ways to go. All right, game. Hurry up. I'm getting impatient. Go. Speed run. There we go. So now we have carbon dioxide that's coming out here. Notice that there are still zombie spore germs, which is why you don't want to have your duplicates in this area when this is happening. So, like, walling this off is definitely an idea that you could do. You don't even have to have it that big, by the way. It could just be something like this. And it will still dissipate as long as there are tiles that are missing it on the outside. And then over here should never get exposed. Uh, so you could just do something simple like that to get rid of it. But yeah, if you ever find yourself having to deal with these zombie spore germs, uh, I would definitely advise to do it this way, and eventually this will vacuum itself all the way out. Once it's vacuumed out, and you can be sure there's nothing else with zombie spores on it in the area, either by this overlay, or by uh, just visually scanning over everything, and once you've also made sure that this sporkid seed is out of the way, which you could actually, a good idea that I've never thought about is you could just put it down here so that uh, it's already under this liquid lock for the time being. Um, not a bad idea. I guess the pips would be the only thing that would really mess it up from here, but yeah. So yeah, that's how I would deal with zombie spores. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's all I have for right now. Let's touch just a quick second on actual medicine. Because um, another thing you could do if you really wanted to do it, I'm just not going to recommend it because I think it's a waste of time. Uh, is you could train some doctors and you could have them produce stuff that would help you fend off diseases. I'm not going to go too far into detail with this, but I'm only going to say that this is upkeep and this is maintenance that you should not need to do as long as you are doing some of these other things like dealing with your slime well and dealing with your food poisoning well and not exposing yourself to zombie germs and not taking on allergic dupes. As long as you're doing those things, you shouldn't need any of this stuff. Uh, but in case you want a very quick rundown, these are the different things you could make that would deal with different diseases. Notice that especially this bottom one is ridiculously expensive, like steel and sun nymph egg, like it's insane just to handle this. Um, you can use these disease clinics and sick bays in which you have to have a doctor to be able to operate. You have to have the right supplies to be able to administer in these places. You can also use a massage table, which is kind of medicine-y, I guess it's in that category, but you should be able to manage your stress levels with other things and not need to do something like this. So, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that really fast. All right, 
that's pretty much all I have. I'm not gonna go back to other bases like I've done in the past, only because this base is just objectively better than what I've done in the past. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of chill here. We've seen some realistic examples of what you might see in a real run. As soon as I have a real run, I may go back and link this video or the new video to this or update this tutorial or something like that. But yeah, that's what I have. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave any comments you have down below. Um, I'm going to stress this once again that I will not have a lot of great material and I will not have some of these really great ideas without your comments. So if you have any ideas or comments, please leave them down below. Uh, they definitely help everybody get better and play the game better. So definitely encourage that. Uh, yeah, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. Hope you guys are having a great new year and I'll see you really soon.